Hey, hey friends. So welcome to the last new moon of summer. So I know some of you may be grieving that, but for me, I'm really excited. I love fall. I love crisp fall days. I love hot apple cider. I love the color change of the leaves. And what's really exciting for me is that new seasons always bring about change and deep inner work to really understand where we're at and what we want to change for the coming months of the season. It's almost like a new year every season change and it's a really great time to set out new goals and to really like get into that energy of what can I do better or differently. Right. And so that's what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about this new moon in Virgo 2020. So first off, let's just talk about what new moons are in general. So new moons are all about new beginnings. Okay. And it's just about like wiping that slate clean. So think about all of the things that you went through, through the full moon for your forgiveness and letting go ritual. Is there anything that is still remaining within you that you maybe need to release? We're going to get into that in just a bit, but just keep that in mind. So sometimes the new moon can feel really quiet and dark because this is the smallest and the darkest that our moon is um, at any time. It's always the new moon. But the beautiful thing that I love about new moons is that it's always just such a beautiful reminder that it's only through the darkness that we can find the light and that darkness isn't something to fear. And also change isn't something to fear because sometimes change is what really catapults us into the journey that we are meant to be on. Okay, so new moons are all about setting new goals, intentions, and new moon wishes. So if you wanna learn more about new moon wishes, I'm not really gonna talk about that in this video. I want you to head over to my blog at gemstormrelevation.com and you'll be able to read all about new moon wishes and how to do that process so that you can manifest into your life what you are wanting the most. So the focus of a new moon, First, I'm going to back it up just a little bit. So three to five days before the new moon, we have something that's called the balsamic moon. And this phase is just a really good energy that is helping us to release anything that is left from the full moon. And also it helps to relieve any intention, intense emotions that you may still be feeling from the full moon because the full moon really does affect us in many, many ways. And I know that the full moon is always the one that gets all of the recognition as being like the greatest part of the moon phase but I personally love new moons even more <laughs> because it's helping us to release so that we can heal and get that forgiveness and let go and it's when we have our energy in a really great space like that that we're able to put in those new moon wishes and that we're able to have our manifestations goals and intentions to come true and if they don't come true then we're getting really clear indications on what it is that we need to do to make that come true or maybe really clear indications on what it is that our soul actually wants okay so assess the last four weeks of your life leading up to the full moon i want you to really think about what has worked what didn't work and this can be relationships schedule home life work life etc just what didn't work maybe it's just a simple schedule change maybe doing xyz at nine o'clock in the morning isn't working out as well try it at 11 o'clock in the morning and some reason the flow just seems to be better we want to be getting you into a really good harmony so that no matter what is going on you're always focused on your goals intentions and your new moon wishes and this is something that we're constantly wanting to have in our mind throughout the whole four weeks for the entire lunar cycle okay um so one thing about new moons that I have noticed too is that because new moons are about new beginnings, they are kind of about change, releasing and letting go, is that that can sometimes be scary and sometimes people will associate the new moon with being like the longest, darkest night um, of a four week cycle. And for some that may very well be true, but if we can really learn how to take advantage of the phases of the moon, then it doesn't need to be so scary. And normally what a lot of people are scared of when it comes to change is that they just don't know what it's going to look like after. 
but we don't need to know what it's going to look like after because no matter what, everything is happening for a reason. So no matter what happens, it happened for a reason. There was a lesson that we needed to learn. There was somebody that we needed to meet. There was an event that we needed to witness. Whatever it is, there's always some kind of lesson and some kind of learning that comes with it. And yes, that is going to change us nine times out of 10, it's going to be for the better though. So release the fear of change. That's not something that we need to be keeping within our systems because the only thing that is constant in our lives is change. So let's appreciate it. Let's love change. Let's celebrate change instead of fearing it. All right. So this new moon in Virgo, let's talk about the energies that Virgo is going to be bringing into this new moon. So the Virgo energy in general is very grounded, hardworking, creative, reliable, patient, and kind. So these are the kind of energies that we are going to want to have within our systems throughout this. This is what the universe needs from us. So this isn't what the universe is giving us. This is what we need to give the universe so that we can have our best possible outcome outcome and have these amazing moon wishes, intentions, and goals really get on track to where we need them to be. So the Virgo energy first off wants us to take inventory. So as already mentioned, this kind of inventory is all about what has worked, what hasn't worked. Okay. So really take a look at your life closely and think about the events that have happened, things that maybe have triggered you, whatever it is, what didn't work and what can we do differently to maybe make these things work so i know that that's a pretty broad statement but if you know yourself really well then you probably already know you already have some ideas in your mind of what that is then just really be willing to look at it and honestly just being willing to look at it and acknowledging the parts that maybe aren't so great can really help us see the bigger picture of what it is that we are truly desiring Secondly, Virgos want us to come up, this Virgo energy wants us to come up with some kind of service to others. Because Virgo are so kind, it's a really great energy to bring into your systems and it's always going to help with manifestation, aka new moon wishes. So this doesn't have to be anything huge. Like it really doesn't. If you want it to be something huge that's going to take up some of your time, by all means, please do. If that's volunteering somewhere, if that's helping a friend out with something, and it can even just be as a simple smile to a stranger. So I know that a lot of us are kind of stuck behind masks and we can't necessarily smile at strangers so much anymore. But whenever you're not wearing a mask, if you're in a vehicle and you're driving by somebody, just a simple smile, you never know how that smile could change somebody's day right? We don't know. And it could be the one thing that got them through the day that day. So be willing to be of service to others. That's something that the Virgo energy really wants us to hone in on. Now, another thing, this is one of the not so great sides because no matter who we are, no matter what we do, every energy has a light and a dark, a good and a bad, however you want to look at it. Even though I personally don't believe that there's anything that is good or bad, I think it's just perception, okay? Um, but the Virgos can sometimes be a little picky. They can be a little nitpicky. They can be critical. Um, they can be judgmental. So this new moon in Virgo also wants to remind us that we do not need to be so hard on ourselves because who's the number one person that we judge? ourselves always. So don't be so hard on ourselves to not judge others, to not be critical of others, and to really avoid focusing on all of the faults of self and others because that is human nature we are designed with flaws because we are humans this is part of the journey this is part of what we're here to learn we're spiritual beings having a human experience okay not the other way around we are not humans having a spiritual experience that's no we are spiritual beings have a human experience and it's very easy for us to be critical on ourselves and it's easy for us to be judgmental of others. But this Virgo energy really wants us to rein that in and to really think about 
the things that we're saying or the actions that we're taking and how loving are some of those actions so again this comes back to taking inventory as well like what's working what's not working if there's a lot of judgment that you feel is coming out from you then guess what manifestation is not working maybe there's other energies within your body that's not working and that can sometimes come from judgment of others so we want to make sure that we're really thinking about what we're saying and what we're doing and even the thoughts inside of our heads especially for having negative self-talk being critical of ourselves this world is tough enough we don't need to be so hard on ourselves again we are just having a human experience and that is part of the human experience and if you can get yourself into a place where you appreciate every part of that experience then it's just going to open up a very happy world for you and then lastly the virgos want us to get organized this energy is all about getting organized this is in our home this is at work and this is with our schedule okay just make sure that we're doing everything that we can that everything is flowing with really good harmony so again it's coming back to what's working and what's not working okay so let's change around the schedule let's move some things around to see what is going to work and what's not going to work for us what's going to serve our highest good and maybe what's not working out so well but let's get all of those things organized and in place and i think this is incredibly um powerful message right now as a lot of people have begun the going back to school process for parents and kids you know we have to make sure that we're really organized we're on top of our task list we're making sure that things are clean and sanitized and healthy for our families so having a really good organizational system into place really helps with that so when it comes to organizing the schedule this is something that i talk with my clients about all the time because you need to schedule in every little detail so you don't forget something so at the end of the day you're not laying in bed being like oh my goodness i forgot to do this and i can't go to sleep now until it's done how many have had that issue <laughs> right and it happens to all of us that's just part of it but if we can get really close up close and personal with our calendars and literally scheduling in every task even if it's just a five minute task just so that we don't forget what it is that we need to do and it's keeping ourselves organized and although it may feel like a lot of work it's going to pay off in the end so what I personally do is every Sunday I sit down and I plan my whole week for the next week so I make sure that I am on top of all of the things that I need to do that I need to get ready and I have everything written in so for me even my social posts I have to give myself a reminder every day to post on Instagram otherwise I would forget and it wouldn't get done and then I would lose my consistency and then I would start to feel poorly about myself then I would start to doubt myself so it's like just a huge snowball effect right so taking advantage of these moon phases and taking advantage of this energy that the Virgo is really wanting us to bring into our systems is really going to help us not only get clear on what it is that we want, what it is that we want to manifest, um, what it is that's working for us, what's not working for us. It's just going to give us more balance and more harmony. And at the end of the day, I think that's what everybody wants is just balance and harmony. So I'm going to leave you with that for today. If there's more information that you would like to learn, head on over to the blog, gemstormrelevation.com. Go under moon energies. Um, sorry, go under blog and then moon energies and look up the new moon in Virgo 2020. And also in there is jam packed with rituals. So I have explained the whole process of doing new moon wishes and then I have a ritual that includes that new moon wishes process as well. So I always encourage people to do moon water. So that is in there and it's explained to you the two different ways that you can do moon water. Um, and then just, a, it's just a beautiful practice. So if you want to take advantage, 
advantage of the moon energy make sure you head on over to the blog to check it out so as always make sure that you hit the like button subscribe to this channel so that you always get your moon updates and anything else that i upload you can follow me on facebook at gemstorm relevation you can follow me on instagram at gemstorm relevation anywhere that you might want to find gemstorm relevation just look that up i'm on etsy instagram youtube i'm everywhere so just look up gemstorm relevation and you will find me all right until next time relevate the day Namaste.